Today's lesson is on trigonometry, primary trig ratios. So first we're going to look at the word trigonometry, which you can break down into three parts, tri, gono, and metri. Now tri, as you probably guess, means three, tricycle, triathlon, so this means three. Gono may be a little harder to figure out. It comes from gonio, actually, which means angle. And metri means measure. So three angle measures. Now trigono was like a triangle, so triangle measures. And the part of trigonometry that we're going to be focusing on uses primary trig ratios and they work when you have right angle triangles. So this is the basic part of trigonometry. Okay, so let's talk about how trigonometry came about. So what they figured out was that if you maintain an angle, let's say this is 30 degrees and hopefully it's as close as possible to that, and you look at the different sides of a triangle. So let's say we took the measure of this side, which, um, let me get my ruler out, you'll see is about two and a half inches, because I have inches, and this side would be five inches. So you can see that this is half of this one. Now that's going to change as the angle changes, as you may have guessed, because if I make it, let me put my ruler on here, if I do a smaller angle, you can see this side to this side is going to change as I go uh, to smaller and smaller angles, the angle being measured from here up. Okay, so I had a 30 degree angle here, and when this was 30 degrees, this side was 2.5 centimeters, and it was inches, sorry, and this side was 5 inches. So when you have a 30 degree angle and you have the measure of this side to this side is going to be 1 to 2. And this, they figured out, didn't matter how small you made the triangle. So let's go to where this side length would be 1. So if you see when this is one here, one inch, then this side is going to be, look at that, magical, two inches. So two inches to one inch. So they figured that, wow, this is really cool because if I know this height, I can figure out this one if I keep this angle the same. And of course, there's all sorts of different applications. So. The very first thing you need to learn when you're working with tri trigonometry is you need to know how to label the sides. So labeling becomes very important. Labeling sides. So what does that mean? If I'm going to label the sides, I have to look at what angle I have here, where my angle is. Doesn't matter what the measure is. So if I take my finger and I'm going to draw my hand on here and I'm going to put my finger right here on this angle. I'm holding my hand right here and I want to label what these sides are going to be called. So by convention, this side, as you know, in a right angle triangle is always called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So we're going to give that the letter H for hypotenuse. Now when I'm here, this side way over here, we're going to call that the opposite side. Opposite. And the side right beside it has a great name, the adjacent. Do you know what adjacent means? Adjacent means beside something. It's adjacent to. So when my hand is here, and I'm going to explain why that's important, I can label the sides so we have a, O, and H. Opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. And remember that if I keep this angle at 30 degrees, I can go to any triangle. If I change my side length here as I move it in, these ratios will all be the same for the opposite to hypotenuse. And actually also from the adjacent to the hypotenuse, or the opposite to the adjacent. So all these three ratios are going to maintain 
be the same for any sized triangle given that this angle is 30 degrees. So now that we know how to label the sides, so we have opposite, we have adjacent, and we have hypotenuse, um, we're going to talk about how we're going to work with these numbers. So what the Greeks did, and apparently there's some controversy over who has the, uh, the rights to trigonometry, but basically it happened in Greece, um, India, and I believe there's another country, I forget, but everyone's kind of wants to lay claim to it, but there's not a lot of records. The Greeks kept records on it, so they get the uh, kudos here. So what happened was they decided that if they change this angle, so they do all sorts of measurements. So normally this angle here is called theta. If you don't have an angle for it, you'll just say angle theta. That's just a Greek word that means it's one of the Greek letters of the alphabet. Um, you'll often also see maybe alpha used for an angle, alpha or beta like this. So those three generally are the Greek symbols that they use to represent an angle if you don't know what the measure is. So I know it's this one was 30 degrees. So what they did was they made a table of values and they said, well, if I have zero degrees, what is the measure of the opposite to the hypotenuse, which happens to be called sine. This is the sine of theta. So don't worry too much about what sine, cos, and tan mean. We're going to talk about that soon. But what they did was they did all these measures and when they got to 30 degrees, the sign was 0.5 and so on. So they had all these different measures. I think um, one degree is 0 0.01745. Two degrees is 0 0.0349. And where do all these numbers come from? Well, they're all in a table inside your calculator. So let's bring this calculator in for a minute. And I'm going to show you that you have buttons on your calculator that normally say sine, cos, tan. There's another number above it. It says sine negative one, cos negative one, tan negative one. We're going to be using all these six little functions on your calculator. So within this calculator, so if I said, what is the sine of one degree? And I would get, oops, you know what? My calculator is in the wrong mode. We want degrees. That would be something very important for you to know as well, that you have your calculator in degrees, not in radians. Radians is just another way of measuring, and you'll do that later. So if I do sine of one degree, I get this 0 .1, 0 0.01745, and so on. So if I do sine of 30, which is the one we were looking at, I get 0.5, or 1 to 2, the opposite to the hypotenuse. Okay, so in your calculator you have all of these things. So you don't use tables anymore. When I went to school we didn't have calculators and we used tables. So we had tables and we had to look up the value for each of these. So in your calculator, they're all in there for you. Isn't that happy, magical? Okay, so let's move on back to talking about labeling the sides. So again, I said you have to be able to label them as opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse, right? We need these three sides. These are all, again, dealing with right-angled triangles. So let's say my theta was up here, the angle that I was working with. Now, obviously, you have two angles that you could work with, so I'm going to put theta in this other angle here so you can see how the labeling changes depending on where you are what angle you're working with in the triangle. This is going to become important. Okay, so we know that the hypotenuse is always the same side. It doesn't change. The hypotenuse is the longest side, and it's always the side opposite. The side opposite the 
90 degree angle. Okay, so hypotenuse right here. Okay, you can label that one, this one, hypotenuse. Okay, now the problem comes when you have to label the adjacent and the opposite side. So again, what I tell my students to do is put their finger on the angle. So here, I'm gonna put my finger here, do, 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 this one little hand, and here's my angle here, finger, do, do, do. And when you have your finger on the angle, the sides that are on both sides, so this one and this one, when my finger is here, have to say, aha. Okay, see how it says, aha. If I put an O here, it would say, oh ho, which is, oh no. Okay, so your finger goes on the angle, that gives you the A. Same thing over here. If I put my finger on this angle, this has to say, aha, aha. Okay, that's a little trick to help you remember which one is the adjacent side. And because you know where the hypotenuse is, by default, the other one is going to be the opposite. Now, some people just know that when you're across from this, that's opposite it. And when it's right beside it, it's the adjacent. This is all true. But this little aha rule, so just like this, see, aha. This little aha rule might help you along as well. Okay, so why is that important? Once I've labeled the sides, there are three primary trig ratios that we've been starting to talk about a little bit here. So the first one is called the sine ratio. Sine ratio. And when you talk about the sine ratio, you write sine like this. Now the sine has to be sine of something. You can't just say sine equals. It's sine of theta. The sine of the angle because you're describing the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's our first primary ratio. Opposite over hypotenuse. Just like we did up here with this triangle here, I said opposite over hypotenuse was 0 0.5. 2.5 to 5. The ratio. So we're talking about a ratio all the time. The sine ratio, sine theta. Now the next one is going to be the cosine ratio. We're only going to focus on one of them today, which is the next one after this, but you're going to need to know these three. So this is cos theta, and don't say sin theta. There's no sin in math, and it's not cos, it's cosine theta. And cosine theta is when you take the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And the third ratio, and the last one that you're going to look at, is the tangent ratio. And the tangent ratio is, what's, what do we have left here? We just say tan theta means tangent theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So now we have all three primary trig ratios. The sine, the cos, the tan. Now there is an easy way to remember this as well. I didn't invent it. But if you look, we have sine. So if we look at the first letters, so I have S, O, and H. So they call this one so. This one C A H. So that's ka. And this is T O A, which is toa. So soka toa, you may hear this from your teacher. Most likely they will at some point say it's just the soka toa rule. Soka toa. Soak your toa right? And it's not Sako Toa, it's Soka Toa. So make sure you've got this right. And I think now that if you know how to label these properly, you won't have any problem whatsoever. Now, of course, the triangle could be drawn in a little different way. So let's say I have a triangle like this. I'm just going to freehand this. I have to look to where the right angle is. Now remember, these primary tree ratios only work for right angled triangles. So if my theta is here, can you label the side? 
Well, of course you can, because you know where the hypotenuse is. That's this long side here, so we're going to put an H here. We're going to put our finger on this angle, sorry. We're going to put our finger on this angle, and that means this has to be the aha. So there's my adjacent, and this is going to be my opposite. Let's try one more just to make sure you've got it. Let's turn this one upside down. Here's my right angle. Here's my angle that I'm working with. Now you'll understand more what I mean by the angle I'm working with because it will be an angle that you've been given or been asked to find. So hypotenuse, the long side. I put my finger on the angle. This becomes my A and this becomes my H. Now, like I said before, you have to realize that if I have this angle here that I want to work with, let's call it beta, and I'm going to change color so you see if I have beta here, then this is still H, but this becomes the A, right? Put your finger over here. This has to say aha, uh -huh, and this becomes the opposite. So remember that the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. What did I write the H here for? Who did that? I don't remember doing that. And this is my A here. I wasn't. Who did that? Not me. <laughs> okay. So we have the hypotenuse and aha right here. And this is my opposite side. But it's going to change. Remember, the A and the O will change position. So when I'm here, this is aha. There's my O. When I'm here, this is my aha. And this is my O. So remember to watch. Put your finger on the angle to make sure that you're labeling it properly and labeling it properly will be 90% of your problem which you can fix pretty quickly right okay so let's move on to we're going to talk about the tangent ratio today so do you remember a tangent now we did so ka toa so tangent ratio is going to be tan theta equals oa oa opposite right opposite over the adjacent now note again that i put in theta here you don't just say tan equals it has to be tan of an angle okay so how does this all work what are we going to do with this so the first thing we're going to do is draw a triangle and we're going to solve you're going to be amazed at how smart you can be very quickly. Okay, so here's my, my triangle. And in this corner here, we have 38 degrees. That's my theta. But I don't have to call it theta because I have an angle. It's 38 degrees. Or you could say theta equals 38 degrees, right? Theta equals 38 degrees. That's great. We know the angle. Here's my right angle. You need to have a little box in there. And I know that this side over here is 12 units long. And the question is, how long is this side? We're going to solve for x. So how long is x? Solve for x, it might say. Or solve for the unknown, which will now be the known. Okay, so how do I work this? So the first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to label the sides. So with this angle here, this is my angle, and this being the hypotenuse, then this side right beside it, finger, aha, so x is going to be the adjacent side, and 12 is going to be the opposite side. So now I look at it and I say, well, what do I have to work with? You only need three things, an angle and two sides. So I have an angle, I have this side, and I'm trying to find this side. So I'm using O and A, and therefore I'm going to use the tangent ratio. Great, that's what the lesson's all about. So I'm going to say the tan of, now I'm gonna, not gonna write theta because I have the measure. And remember, inside my calculator, it's going to give me what that ratio should be. 
So I'm going to say tan of 38 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. My opposite is 12 and my adjacent is x. So it's 12 over x. Now I need to solve for x. So solving ratios, um, there's a very simple way to do this. And basically you want to write anything that is written in a numerator can be divided by a 1. True? Of course it's true. 10 divided by 1 is 10. 3 billion divided by 1 is 3 billion. So it can be written as a rational number or rational expression. 10, 38 over 1 equals 12 over x. Now this is the best trick in the world and one that my son-in-law who went into carpentry said saved his trigonometry lessons. You start with your unknown. You want to solve for x. So I start here. Then I go up, across, and back up. And it makes this makes a backwards n. So it's up, diagonal, and end here. So x, now I can tell you exactly what x equals. x equals 12 times 1, 12 times 1, divided by the tan of 38 degrees. Okay, so this is called the n thing. And maybe I'll do just a couple of them over here on the side so you, you get the idea. So if I said x over 7 equals 2 over, um, let's do something you know the answer to, 14. Okay, so let's see x equals 7 times 2 divided by 14. Now you knew that because you knew that reducing 2 over 14 would give you 1 over 7. So this says x equals 7 times 2 over 14. Okay, let's do another one with x in a different spot. Let's say uh, 5 over x equals 15 over um, 20. I want to do ones that you would know the answer to. So x equals, so I can't go down, so I go up, across, and up. This makes a perfect n, right? See the n? So x equals 5 times 20 divided by 15. So I guess you wouldn't have known exactly what that would be. That's a little hard to calculate in your head. But 5 goes into 15 three times, and I would get 20 divided by 3, which you could write as a decimal. Okay, so that's the little n thing, as I call it, the n thing. Makes your solving ratios very simple. Okay, so how am I going to finish this one now? So I take up my calculator because I do not know what the tan of 38 degrees, but guess what? My calculator does. So I'm going to do 12, I don't need to write times 1, divided by, and I push the tan button, tan, let me get my calculator in view here, tan of 38. Now you don't need to close the bracket because you're not doing anything else to it, but I will anyway. So 12 divided by tan 38 equals, and I get 15.36 approximately. So approximately equal to 15.36, and that would be units, right? Because they didn't have I wasn't told whether or not they were centimeters or inches or meters or kilometers, whatever. Okay, so this is, you don't really need to write out any more steps in that because it's all done in your calculator. And remember that your calculator has all of these tables inside it, so you don't have to look at tables to solve. Okay, so this was a demonstration on finding the side length, finding side length. Now we're going to do the other little operation that you're going to learn to do and it's called finding an angle. So let's write finding an angle. Okay, so remember I told you you need to know three things. Uh, well, you have three things that you're, you don't, you, you need three things to solve. So in this case we're going to be given two side lengths and we're going to be asked to find the angle. So there's three things. That's what I was trying to say, and not very clearly did I say that. But here's 18, 14, and my angle here. So I want to know what is this angle that would be 
Let me get my calculator out of the way so you can see. What is this angle if this side is 14 and this is 18? Okay, so once again, we do our labeling the sides. Angle is here. Hypotenuse is here. Aha, that means A is 14 and O is 18. So we know that we're working with the tangent ratio because that's what this lesson is all about. But if you didn't know, you'd say, okay, I'm trying to find this angle and I have the opposite and the adjacent sides. So which trig ratio has OA in it? OA. Well, we know it's tan OA. So I'm now going to write out my ratio again. So I'm going to say, what's tan of theta? Because I don't know what the angle is this time, so I use theta as opposed to this one here where I knew the angle and I was trying to find a side. Now I'm trying to solve for theta when I know what the opposite side I'm going to write this all up first, opposite over adjacent. So now I'm going to plug in opposite and adjacent. So the opposite, I've labeled it as 18, and the adjacent is 14. Okay, so this is the ratio of the sides, and from that I can find the angle. So remember once again that in your little calculator here, with your screen and all your little buttons, if you want to find finding a ratio is very easy. You just do tan of 38 degrees and it gives you an answer. But if I want to know the angle in your calculator, you have a button called tan negative one, which is right above the tan button. Let me show you here. Okay, so here's tan and you see right above it here it says tan negative one. So what that does, it goes into your calculator and it looks at that big table that you had and it finds the ratio and tells you the angle. So you have ratio and you have angle, right? So, and your calculator's in the middle here. So sine, cos, and tan will give you, take you to the ratio but sine negative one, cos negative one, tan negative one will take you back to the angle. So these things go back and forth inside your calculator. You don't even have to think. So how do I do this one? So on your calculator, you would have a second function button. Mine is blue. So when I hit the second button, it turns on all of these other things that are in blue, okay? So I want the tan negative one. Oh, there goes my calculator. So I go second, tan, and see right away it says tan negative one. Now all I have to do is put in the ratio and hit enter, and it's going to give me the angle. So the ratio is 18 divided by 14, and magic button enter, and there's my angle. Okay, so remember your calculator goes from angle to ratio, and then you can go from ratio to angle by using the tan negative one. Okay, so this one ends up being approximately equal to, now remember you can't say it's equal to because you're going to be doing, you've got lots of decimals here, unless it's like 30 degrees where it's 0.5. Um, we have 52.13 if it was to two decimals, right? And that is in degrees. So, I should have written one more step in here. Sorry, I should have had. Let's just stroke this out for a minute. So I'm going to do, write it out just like it was in your calculator. Tan negative 1 of 18 over 14 equals theta, and theta equals approximately 52.13 degrees. Okay, so this is kind of an important step. Or you could have just put this answer up here, but I just want to make sure that you see how you get to theta. Okay, so that's an introduction to, calc to trigonometry. Um, you need a calculator for this. Now, you don't have to have a fancy TI-84+. Plus. You can buy a scientific calculator for probably $10, maybe even less, and that's in Canadian dollars. Um, just want a scientific one that has sine, cos, and tan.
Okay, tomorrow I will work on um, the sine and cosine ratios and we'll do some word problems. Bye for now.